Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to evaluate improper integrals of type 1. So these are the types of integrals that has an infinite interval. So as you can see here for this example here, we have 1 to infinity. And so the way that we are going to start is that we are going to start by using the definition. So we write this improper integral as a limit of a definite integral. So we have the definite integral from 1 to b where this b is approaching infinity. Okay, so we are going to get the same integrand here, 1 over x. Okay, so first we are going to evaluate the definite integral and then after that we take the limit. And so now we are going to just write down the limit here. And then integrating 1 over x, we are going to get ln of absolute value of dx, that's the antiderivative of 1 over x, and then we evaluate from 1 to b, and then so now using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can plug the b into the x, plug the 1 into the x, and then subtract them. So we have ln of absolute value of b minus ln of absolute value of 1. And then so just to see that, I want a 1 actually is zero. So we only need to worry about finding the limit of L and B. And so we have the limit as B goes to infinity and then Ln of absolute value B. And so when B is approaching infinity, then L and B is also approaching infinity. So our answer is infinity. And so what does that mean? That means this improper integral is divergent. Okay, here's another problem. This time we have the lower limit as like the infinity and the upper limit is zero. So we are still going to use the definition to write that as the limit. And so we have a approaching like the infinity. The integral is going from a to zero. And then integrand is the same. So one over one plus x squared dx. And so what happens is that we are going to integrate Integrating this 1 over 1 plus x squared, we get octangent, so tangent inverse of x. Evaluate from a to 0, and then so now just plug in. Okay, so we are going to get tangent inverse of 0 minus tangent inverse of a. And then see the tangent inverse of 0 is 0, so we don't need to worry about this one. All we need to worry about is just the negative tangent inverse of a and then we are taking the limit as a approaches negative infinity so negative tangent inverse of a and so now the question is what is this limit equal to um it would actually be a good idea to actually just just draw a, like a tiny sketch of the tangent inverse function and then we can just go from there and see the, the limit. Okay, so I'm going to graph it here just to make a, a tiny sketch of that. This is x, this is y, and then what happened is that we have the two horizontal asymptotes for the tangent inverse function. So this is at pi over two, and then the, the other one is at like the pi over two, and then the curve is actually, it looks like this. And then so when, a is approaching negative infinity, we are actually looking at this spot right here. So when the curve is going to negative infinity, because that's that's what a where a is. A is inside, it's being plugged into the tangent inverse. So we look at this right here, and then we look at the behavior, the ta tangent inverse function. So it's approaching negative pi over two. And so the limit is like the power of a two, but then the, don't forget that there was a minus sign here. So we need to pay attention to that. So what happened is that we are getting negative. That's actually coming from this negative sign here. And then also this is approaching like the power of a two. So we have like the pi over two. And so what do we get as the answer here? We get pi over two. And so what is the answer? <clears throat> this is equal to pi over two. And then the improper integral is convergent. Okay, one more improper integral here. This time we have the lower limit is negative infinity and the upper limit is positive infinity. So the way that we are going to start this is to separate the integral into two, into those ones that we just calculated. So we can write it as the integral from negative infinity and then 
x e to the negative x squared as the integrand. And then what happened is that we need to choose a convenient point for us. And the convenient value that we can choose would be zero. And so now we have the two integrals. And so now for the second integral, the lower limit would be zero. And then the upper limit would be the positive infinity. So we have the infinity here and then x e to the negative x squared and then the x. Okay, so because we need to compute both, then what happened is that we would need to uh, find the antiderivative first. So it would be a good idea because it will work for both integrals when we find the antiderivative. So um, we just need to make sure that if they both converge, then our original integral will converge. But if one of them diverges, then this original integral will also diverge. Okay, so we are going to uh, just find the antiderivative first. And that would be just to, let's do that here. So integrating um, x e to the negative x squared dx. And so what happened is that we are going to do a u sub, so we can let u be negative x squared, and then du is going to be negative 2x dx. And then you can see that there was an x here, there was a dx here, there was an x here, dx here, so we can isolate the x dx, and then we move the negative 2 to the other side of the equation. So we are going to get negative 1 over 2 du is equal to x times dx. And then so what do we get here? We are going to get negative one over two, and then the integral, and then um, this is x dx, right? It's replaced by negative one half, and then du, so there is the du here, and then we have the integrand as e to the negative, no, just e to the u, which is just negative one over two, e to the u, and then put back the negative x squared into the u, so we get negative one over two, e to the negative x squared. And then there was a plus C here, but we are not going to write it down for now because we are going to have actually a, a definite integral. Now let's compute this one. So computing this one, actually, let me just use, uh, let me just highlight this. I'm going to do it in a different color. So this integral, negative like infinity to zero, x e to the negative x squared dx. So what happens is that we are going to just write it as a limit of a definite integral here. So we have a approaching negative like infinity, just like the second example. So we have going from a to zero and then x e to the negative x squared dx. Okay, and then we already have found the antiderivative. Okay, so we are just going to continue. So we have the limit as a approaching negative infinity, and then antiderivative is negative one over two e to the negative x squared, and then you evaluate from a to zero. Plug in the um, plug in the zero in here, so we get negative one over two e to the negative zero square, and then minus. Now plug the a in here, so we get negative one over two e to the negative a square. Okay, so just continue from here. We have the limit as a goes to negative infinity. Now what do we get from here? We get negative one over two because e to the zero is one. So we get negative one over two, and then plus, one over, okay, why do we get a plus here? Because there is minus minus, right? So we get a plus. And then the two is in the denominator. There was also e to the, well, there was the negative exponent here. So also in the denominator. So we are going to get two and then e a square. So now see that we have an a square as the exponent of the e. So when a goes to negative infinity, we score it, we get positive infinity. So the denominator is approaching positive infinity. So the whole thing is actually approaching zero. So we have the answer as negative one over two. So this integral, this first one right here, it's convergent. Okay, so we say that that one is convergent, but now we still need to look at the other one, right? So let's do the, the other one. So we are doing the second one, let's do it right here. So we get the integral from zero to infinity, and then same integrand. And that's the limit as b approaches infinity, replacing the infinity with a b, and then we have the zero at the bottom. We have x e to the negative x squared dx. And then so now what happens is that we are going to just start plugging in the antiderivative in here. 
Well, actually, we are actually just replacing the integral by the antiderivative, not plugging in. And then going from what? Going from 0 to b. Continuing from there. So b going to infinity. And then we have now plug the b in here, plug the 0 in here, subtract. And so um, just write it like what we had here as a fraction so so that there is no negative exponent which will make it easier for us to evaluate the limit okay so let's continue from there so we are going to get negative one over and then two and then e to the b square okay and then plus then again there was a minus minus here so we get a plus and then we have positive one over two and so just like before, because there was a b score here, that is the exponent of the e. So when b goes to infinity, this denominator is approaching uh, infinity. So this whole fraction is approaching zero. So we only need to worry about this one half here. Well, actually, the answer will just be one. Half. So the second integral is also convergent. So that means our original integral is convergent okay so that means we just need to add those two values and then we can find the value for our original improper integral so right now what happened is that we are going to go back to the original so we have like the infinity infinity for the original integral and what is that equal to that is going to be like the one over two and then plus and then the positive one over two what is that equal to so the answer is zero so again, we say that it's convergent. And so that's it for those three problems here. Okay, so hope that you enjoy this video. And if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time.